Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante. We're back, we're live from EMC World 2012, and uh, this is SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage of EMC World. As I said at the top of the, the show, we've got a simulcast going on at the HBase conference in San Francisco. My co-host John Furrier flew out to that last night, so we'll be uh, simulcasting that. Go to SiliconANGLE.TV, check the HBase link if you want to watch that program. But we're here live, we're here with Don Basili, the CEO of Violin Memory, uh, Violin Memory is one of the hottest flash startups on the planet right now. Uh, Don has uh, been growing the company, uh, uh, has a strong background, a former C uh, CEO and chairman of uh, Fusion IO, uh, has raised, I believe, 190 million. We're going to get into that for Violin Memory, getting ready to do an IPO. Don, Dr. Basili, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me, David. Good to see you. It's great seeing you. Appreciate Thanks you spending so much. some time here. We're here That's with David exciting. Floyer as well. Yeah, the, you, we were talking off camera, you said this is your first EMC world. Uh, it uh, is, it is. I like VMworld, I go to that uh, many times, but my first time at EMC World, and uh, here it's a record for EMC. It's quite an event, uh, isn't it? Now, I got to ask you, are you here as a, you know, like a VPlex sort of partner? Are you here as a friend, a foe? I mean, it's, uh... Well, uh, one of our partners, uh, ICI, uh, has us in uh, one of the booths here. Okay. Showing off a great VDI solution using violin. ICI, the guys so, from uh, Marlboro Mass, right? Yeah, from going. Marlboro Mass, yeah. Um, long time big uh, EMC distributor, and uh, need some flash to go ahead and, and make those VDIs run and are demonstrating violin in the booth. So, really excited to come down and support them. Yeah, good, I mean, flash obviously is hot. Joe Tucci's been talking about it, he talked about it in his keynote. We saw the acquisition of Extreme IO. That had to make you happy. I mean, a big what, a, what a great valuation, was it 420 million for yeah. uh, 25 people, it's rumored? <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, we have almost 400 people, so when you start doing that math, we're. We're getting pretty excited. Yeah, well, <laughs> you start to get the linear equation out, and it's good. It's good, but uh, yeah. So I mean, a lot, lot going on in your part of the world. Well, you saw the Facebook IPO, obviously. We did really. Uh, what do really you think excited. about that? I, I, I think it's a hundred billion dollar IPO in the Valley, six year, eight year old company. Uh, it just shows that the innovation is still possible. I mean, people coming out of two thousand two were like, "Is the internet dead? Is it all been done?" And then uh, Facebook comes along and creates a whole new ecosystem. So, very, very exciting. Uh, area and uh, you know it's an area. Violin's not directly in that particular company, but uh, it's an area where I personally invested in the the whole area of social commerce, which I think is going to be a huge explosion. You know, coming on that ecosystem that uh, Facebook has, Google, Microsoft have around uh, social connections. So exciting time really to be in, in tech innovation again. Yeah, I mean it's it's really the third mega IPO, right? Obviously Netscape and Google and now Facebook. And uh, although Facebook's taking a little heat, its first full day of trading, it pulled back. I guess uh, Morgan cut its estimates, you know, while the roadshow was going on. So a little controversy there, but you know, we would expect that data is the really the central point, the central leverage point of of Facebook, even more so than potentially advertising. It's all about data, and uh, and you know, we think there's a lot of potential there. We have we 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 agree with you. Really exciting time in tech. But so let's talk about uh, violin. Um, you guys have, you know, it's reported to be an 800 million dollar valuation based on the math that we just did with the back of the napkin on Stream IO. It's a little undervalued right now, but, uh, but uh, still pretty good. Well, I think uh, you know, that's an equity investment value. It's not an acquisition or IPO value. Um, so you know, I think that uh, I think the equity investment value of Extreme IO is quite a bit lower uh, when you're bought. But you know, I think EMC has been uh, one of the big buyers in the industry. Uh, they've paid uh, some, some good dollars for uh, Isilon, for Data Domain. Uh, now they've paid a very high price for uh, Extreme IO, at least for all of the people in the company. Uh, so I think it's exciting, but I think what it, it's indicative of is that the value to the enterprises, because in the end of the day, violin exists to make applications run faster and cheaper for the end user customers. And that's just, that's what we do. That's what we think about all day long. And it shows that this new approach of memory-based technologies is what the end customers want. And that the legacy approach is you know, in, in danger of being replaced. Uh, and so the companies have to either build it themselves, it's very hard to do. The violin IP goes back to 2005. Uh, another stream we got from 2006. We're talking about six, seven years of development to bring it to fruition, uh, or they have to buy their way into the market. And uh, so I think you're seeing now, you know, this is just on the heels of a number of acquisitions: supply and acquisition, the Sandforce acquisition, Stream IO acquisition. People trying to buy their way into the market so they can start to make products. And I read the the, the newspaper report from yesterday in like next year. So sometime next year they hope to turn that technology acquisition to a product acquisition. Yeah, with their all flash array. I mean, it's, uh, it's curious, I mean, we're, we're watching, thinking, okay, is there going to be, you know, in the NFL, when somebody drafts a left tackle, all of a sudden there's a run on left tackles. We're, you know, do you think it'll be a similar sort of run on 
on flash companies, or is it a little bit too early for that? You know, I, I like in this space, first of all, space is so exciting. I mean, I haven't been this excited since the networking space in the 90s. Um, and I liken a lot to that industry. In that industry, you had many, many, many companies formed throughout the 90s. There was a big incumbent called IBM. And IBM a technology called SNA. And almost every company used SNA. Uh, 70, 80% of the data flew through, through SNA in the, in the corporate network. Even the middle of the decade was still there, but out of that decade, 20, 30, 40 companies were, were bought for hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. And in the end, Cisco emerged. And IBM actually sold SNA to Cisco and sort of exited the, the networking business. They just got back into it another 10 years later. Yeah, uh, and so I think that it's very interesting here, we're seeing a similar thing. There's another 30 to 50 companies already formed, venture back, that are trying to do what Violin's doing. Okay, and create all memory arrays. All flash-based memory arrays to go ahead and bring it to the market. Much like there are 30, 50, 100 companies creating IP networking devices uh, in, the, in that. So I think that it's, it's healthy, it's very healthy. And it shows that in the end, the customers want the technology, and they're looking for the approaches to get the technology, whether it's from an incumbent vendor or an upstart, that's to be determined. Uh, what we can do is, is kind of try to copy what the great John Chambers has done, which is basically build violin, make it bigger and bigger and bigger, and keep servicing the customer over the next five, six, seven years, so that we hopefully emerge as a very important player you know, out, of that, out of that period. Well, I, I wonder if I could run this by, I kind of look at uh, violin as the data domain of Flash, in, in other words, Data domain's value proposition was, you know, obviously it, was, it had its data deduplication piece, but a, a real appeal of data domain was that you could drop it in and you didn't have to change anything. You didn't have to change your processes. You guys talk a lot about no changes to applications. So I use that analogy because it's disruptive, but it's not, it's disruptive to the industry, but it's not disruptive to the IT practitioner. Is that a fair uh, angle? It's a, it's a brilliant insight, and it's something we work really hard about. You know, we, we talked about ADCIOs when we first uh, took over Violin as Violin 2.0, we took it over, recapped it, um, and they said, listen, don't make me change my infrastructure. Someone has always given me something faster and better, just let it plug in. It's why we have VPlex certification, SVC certification, work with Oracle ASM, Semantic Veritas. You can plug Violin today, get the benefit, don't have to change your database, and make it all happen. And that's, I think, the reason we've been able to get some of the biggest customers in the world to have already adopted Violin in such a short time period. Now, um, you guys are readying to do an IPO, right? Talk about that a little bit. Why IPO? I think the public market has shown, and, and you know, hats off to the Fusion Management team today, in that they're basically able to derive a multi-billion dollar valuation in the public market, and able to access capital. And I think that, that we're being asked to do the same thing. Our customers, our partners are saying, go public, raise another few hundred million dollars of capital, grow Violin even faster to go ahead and take advantage of the opportunity. Cisco did it in its day, Google did it in its day, Netscape did it in its day. It seems like the right thing to do for our customers, our employees, and our shareholders. Well, and you're going after some, some big markets, right? I mean, I, I presume like most CEOs slash investors, you're looking for a big market, and you've obviously targeted one. I mean, you've publicly talked about Oracle, <laughs> EMC, as really ripe for change. Now, of course, you're Again, there's this coopetition, right? You're in with ICI, they're strong EMC partners, so there's this sort of ebb and flow of friend and foe. Um, but talk about that a little bit in terms of the size of the market that you're going after. Today, we believe we address $20 billion of annual spend. The high I.O. market and a performance optimized uh, tier two market. That's today, and all that should be in memory. And, and it's not because we say, it's because Larry Ellison says at Oracle, should be in memory. Joe Tucci himself is tall about the future of his industry, but even more importantly, the application software vendors, okay, the SAPs of the world, who's now our investor and partner, the, the Oracles of the world, the Microsofts, these SASs of the world, they're saying all my applications should run in memory, and I want persistent memory, I want network shareable memory, and that's the way you should run your business. And so the customers are saying, yeah, I should run my business. Why should I only take 10% of my data for 90 days of a year when I can have 100% of my data in real time for all 20 years I've been in business. You're going to have a much better business if you analyze that kind of data. And so the customers are pulling it, uh, and what we're doing is we're working to deliver the technology. And all the big conglomerates have amazing software. I mean, VMware, Greenplum. I mean, EMC software assets are amazing. Oracle software assets are the best in the world. Of course, that's what we do. We make the software run faster. Where we see competition is usually with a sub-segment of any company. You know, we're technically in competition with a sub-segment of every company of IBM, of HP, but in reality we're not because we're really focusing on a different problem. 
which is actually to give the end customers the ability to analyze and transact on huge amounts of data in real time simultaneously. And that's what we do that no one's ever done before. We, uh, we had Nino on last week from uh, SAP Ventures. Oh, yeah. at, uh, we were down at Sapphire and he, he talked about the investment in, in violin. Um, you mentioned SAP and memory. Of course we got a big dose of HANA. That's, you know, <laughs> you, that's if you're an SAP customer, you're going to hear a lot about that. Um, when when a, a company like SAP, which is corporate venture, invests in a company like yours, is there much discussion about, okay, how do we you know, dovetail into things like HANA, or is it more they just see a trend and, and want to get a piece of the action? It goes the other way. Usually the corporate investment comes after there's a reason to be in the market together. And so if really for all of the uh, investment partners that we have that are corporate, it's because they saw a match in the technologies or the go-to-market, and they really want to support the match. So, you know, as a small company, uh, you need to grow the company to be able to embrace and work with the companies as big as an SAP of the world. And so the investment is really just a, a show of support for what's a, a natural fit in the marketplace, either technologically or go to market. In the case of SAP, I'd say both. Yeah. Uh, it's a wonderful thing for the customers. It's a wonderful thing for the vision of the company, which is a very early on vision. You have to give them a tremendous credit for realizing that the software layer itself should be reshaped over the next seven to 10 years to all run in memory and eliminating the software itself, the bottlenecks. And so they started that program a couple years ago. We happen to, I believe, uh, accelerate that program's ability to go ahead and deal with large data sets. At the same time, we take all the legacy ERP and we can move it in memory right away. Yeah. Uh, and that's really exciting. And you know our stance on that. David Floyer has basically come out and said all active data will be in flash or memory, you know, uh, eventually and probably not memory. that far. And, and, um, so just going on to that, uh, so we only have, I, I, I got the break sign like three minutes ago, but go right, ahead. Okay. Uh, you know, I just got one question, which is, uh, you, you, every, the active memory is going to be uh, in, in, in persistent flash type storage. Where do you see the value in that chain, uh, the, the management value? Where, where are the breaks in that, where you're going to fit in uh, you know, the, the next software companies that are going to come in and take advantage of that, the, the, the new ISVs or the new software, the CAs, et cetera. So I think we work with dozens of, of application level, be they SaaS mm -hmm. or be they uh, existing providers of enterprise software that are going to take advantage of that. So very clear the application layer, the end stuff that touches the customer, be it analytic, be it a, 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 a Salesforce uh, application, be it a, a um, um, a big data stack, whatever it is, uh, those folks are definitely going to benefit from it. They can write the code cheaper and faster and better. In the middle, I think it's an open question. Um, certainly, Violin will have a full set of management features to go ahead and manage our memory spaces into the hundreds of petabytes, into the exabyte la layer. Uh, and then uh, the big middle question is, is uh, things like the virtualization layer. How much does the virtualization layer own? Uh, you can today run VM inside a Violin box if you want to. I understand it's a vision EMC has for the future. Um, so does the virtualization layer take over thing? Does the layer, the memory layer hold right. it? Or does right. the application, as it does in Oracle today, does the application own it? Take over, right. Don't know the answer. Uh, it's exciting to find out. Right. Okay. All right, Don, well listen, thanks very much for coming. I got a lot more stuff for you. I mean, I really would hope you can come back and we can get into sort of your decision to go deep into the, you know, your own controller design. You guys have added value there. It seems like you got a very strong technical team. You've got an interesting combination of business and technology as your background. And uh, so hopefully we can continue this down the road. But, David, uh, look forward to it. Thanks very much for coming time. on. All right. Great seeing you again. All right, thank you. We'll be right there. We'll be right back after this brief break.